Hello and welcome to Women of Worth Wednesday. We are a little bit early today because I wanted to accommodate my very special guest. This is my beautiful daughter, Brooklyn Condi, and it is her first time on Women of Worth Wednesday. And so I'm so thrilled that she has agreed to share a wonderful message and story with you. I am very under the weather. I have not slept much. And um, so she's beautiful enough for both of us <laughs> because you are getting authentic, um, sick all night, um, gain a Lynn, um, and that's just how we roll here on Women of Worth Wednesday, right? Yep. So recently, um, we had the opportunity to send off Brooklyn to do what many teenagers have done over the last few months all over the world, which is trek. And we were trying to think of a really great title for today's message, and we couldn't think of one, <laughs> probably because I haven't slept much. Um, but there, there was a wonderful opportunity. Brooklyn, first, before we jump into the story, tell everyone on um, Women of Worth a little bit about you, who you are, what makes you you. Okay, um, I'm Brooklyn. I'm the greatest, the, I have the greatest mother ever. <laughs> Um, I'm 15. I'm redoing my room. Yes, we've been working on redoing her room this summer, and I think I'm to my limit of of decorating. <laughs> Hobby Lobby shopping. Yeah. Um, I love kids, and um, you're gonna be a sophomore yeah, coming up. Yeah, I'll be I'll be in tenth grade, and I like to have fun. Yeah. And yeah, she's a great. She's a great, amazing daughter. I have a son and a daughter. My son has been a guest on this show. And um, so she had the chance to do some really great, spiritually uplifting uh, testimony building experiences this year. And one of them was Trek. And she had never gone on Trek before. And this year they were able to literally go to Martin's Cove where it really happened. It wasn't mm -hmm. a reenactment place. It was a reenactment of people. Um, and how were you feeling about going to Trek in general? Like, were you excited or well, really, or really like, I don't know. I was actually really excited because my friends, my good friends had gone last year and they told me all about it. Um, and so I was thinking, oh, it would be a good spiritual experience, just like girls camp. But a little part of me was like, well, I'm not so sure. Pioneer clothes, <laughs> pulling hand cards, <laughs> sleeping in a tent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't going to be great accommodation accommodations. Mm -hmm. But Brooklyn, one thing about Brooklyn is she is the most least likely to murmur in a situation. Um, she tries to have a positive attitude, but she she's a human being, and so like I don't think most people. Well, there are some people that want to go live out in the wilderness all the time, but. We're not those people. Um, so <coughs> you got ready to go to Trek. We had all the cute pioneer clothes. <laughs> cute. And tell us how, how it was going. Um, I don't know. It was pretty good. I think we were all getting closer as a ward. Um, but we had gone through Martin's Cove, and I didn't realize that it was Martin's Cove. I thought we were going to Martin's Cove. Which is so classic, like, sometimes in our lives. Like, everyone builds up, like, this is going to be the greatest spiritual experience of your life, and then you go to the temple for the first time, and you're like, ah. Or you go on your mission, and you're like, ah, right? So mm -hmm. I love that she didn't even know it was Martin's Cove. When and they they're were... like, that was Martin's Cove, and I was like, what? Yeah. There was just a lot of mosquitoes, and it was really hot, yeah, and we kept stopping. She was, was supposed like... to have this great spiritual experience, and it didn't It didn't really happen that way. And then, <coughs> uh, for those that are familiar with the Trek experience, there's a really cool thing that happens called the Woman's Pull. Tell everyone that this audience is all over the world, and so there are some areas of the world where they don't do Trek, and they don't know what that is. So what's the Woman's Pull? So Trek is where we pull hand carts, like the Pioneers, and the Woman's Pull is representing when all of the women's husbands... Um, left and went off to the war or went to go hunt or get firewood and um, the women were left to pull the children and all the supplies by themselves so it's just um, for us it was only up one hill for some treks it's like an hour to two hours but um, it's where just the women pull the hand carts up the hill 
and the hill was really rocky and uneven and steep and it was the hardest part of the trail but yeah and and on the reenactment they have the men and the boys stand at the top mm -hmm. as you as the women and girls pull their hand carts up and it and from a lot of people's experiences i've never been on track they say that this is one of the most spiritually uplifting parts you watch it makes me cry and for women of worth it's the women's pool it's it's the moment where you can see the strength of women and as women come together. What happened on the day of your women's poll? So I was actually like a little bit disappointed. <laughs> um, the same thing kind of with Martin's Cove is... Um, There's this big build up. Uh-huh. And it was just one hill and the men were just kind of standing at the top. Like all the other stories I had heard, they were all like singing like angels and um, they were just sitting there like recording and I was like, well, this is a little bit... Anti, Not what I was expecting. Anticlimactic. Yeah. Um, but we got to the top. It was harder than I expected. <laughs> um, but we got to the top, and one of the Ma's, one of the leaders who had come, she had she was pushing from the front, and her foot was so far back that the, um, the big wheel on the handcart ran over the her, back of her heel. The Achilles. The Achilles. Part. And um, so she was at the top just sitting down in pain. She couldn't bend it, and she wasn't sure what happened. Um, and so is that all you want me to share for now? <laughs> no, you can keep going. And so at that point, she's in pain, and she's the kind of person that would push through the pain. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious something is really, really, really wrong. Yeah. And every what happens at that point? What does everyone do? <clears throat> so um, all the leaders... But also all of the teenagers and kids came and they asked how they could help. They were taking, they had family flags. They were taking those out to put on the sick wagon of sorts to have a place for her foot to go up. And so they were creating like a, 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 I don't know, a foot rest. Yeah. And everyone was just doing whatever they could to help. And um, me and my Czech sister, Gracie, we went Shout off. out to Gracie if Gracie's watching. Um, we went off and we just said a prayer um, to help her. And just everyone was doing any little or big thing that they could to um, help her. Or, you know, bringing her water or food or just giving her a hug. And um, it really brought the spirit because it was like something hard that she was going through that... Um, like she is deathly afraid of needles. And she got this big, like, long, thick needle because of how much pain she was in. And A shot from their, the medical. The medic. Uh-huh. And so everyone was just doing little things, but you could feel the love from everyone and the love that was there, and that brought the spirit. So um, I think that was the most spiritual part of Trek for me is just, like, the gospel is about love. And when there's a trial, it gives us a bigger opportunity to serve and receive help and feel closer to God. So, I loved that when she got home, Brooklyn shared with me this story. And out of the whole Trek experience, it was this moment where things were, everyone was nervous, everyone was concerned, that she felt the spirit the most because it was in that moment that everyone was able to, like you said, unite. Mm -hmm. And what I love the most is that... <coughs> Sorry, Brooklyn has had a cold, so she's coughing. And allergies. <laughs> <laughs> so her and Gracie went off to pray, and I think that that was such a sweet example of how these simple acts of service and prayer and um, and what each person did. We have a wonderful guy in our ward who was in charge of the medical needs, Josh Forsyth. I may ta tag Amy in this. Her... Her and um, Amy and Josh were a ma and pa, and he is EMT, fireman, and he's just, a, he provides the humor relief of any situation, mm -hmm. and he pulled her in the medic rickshaw and became the um, her radio, her DJ, mm -hmm. and sang all of these hymns, but in Bon Jovi style. A poor wayfaring man. A poor wayfaring man, yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> I think it's wonderful that two young girls went to pray and someone else brought over their flags to create a footrest and, and Josh 
provided humor and medical support and everyone came together. And I think as we look at ministering assignments, Brooklyn and I are ministering uh, sister partners. And um, we're always trying to figure out how to minister to the sisters that we're assigned to because it doesn't just look like a checklist. And sometimes it does take some opposition. Um, but it was not in these like big moments that everyone had built up. It was in this moment of need that Brooklyn felt the spirit the most. And it was because everyone came together. And I think we shouldn't be going out of our way to try to create drama so that we can have yeah. a stressful situation. But I think as we continue through as school starts or if you're still doing family vacations or things sometimes don't go the way you want them to go our first thought is oh my gosh this ruined everything and poor melissa um it was scary for a while they weren't sure what if she's gonna have to have surgery she's doing fine she's doing great but for many people on track that was the highlight and unfortunately melissa had to be the one and it brings up i like to share a scripture story it brings to mind the story of the boy that was born blind. And when he was healed, everyone was asking previous to that, what did he do wrong? What did his parents do wrong for him to be born, born blind? And it was taught in that story that it, no one did anything wrong. It wasn't Melissa's fault. No one did anything wrong. Accidents happen. Sometimes we are born with limitations. But when this boy was healed from the blindness, it was to testify of Christ. And Melissa getting hurt was a testimony building experience for mm -hmm. everyone that was there. Um, Brooklyn, what, what will you, um, what would you like to share in closing? Or what did you take from that experience that will help you, especially as the school year starts and you go back to high school and the spirit isn't always in high school. She's at a very large high school and, and sometimes it's not, it's definitely not sitting in the temple, right? <laughs> yeah. Any, any closing thoughts, especially for teenagers or parents out there on, on how, how filling the spirit has changed for you from this experience? Well, I think that, um, all of the people that like from history that have impacted my life, they went through trials and those trials are what led to something great that impacted everybody else. So the pioneers, um, there was a part where two of the kids in our trek, they walked the last half mile without shoes. Just to see what that would be like. Mm hmm And their feet were already bleeding. Wow. And so, you know, that was another, like, spiritual part of Trek. But Joseph Smith, all his trials, Christ was, you know, crucified. And um, those are just the immediate ones that come to mind. But um, all the people who impacted history and all the people that we learned about in school um or from our family tree they've all gone through trials that lead to a learning experience or a spiritual experience and strengthen their testimony or others but you have to approach it in a way that you can feel the spirit because if the second something goes wrong you get down on yourself then you're just gonna keep going lower and lower and lower and um, sinking deeper but if you do the things to lift yourself up and make yourself happy again and just you know like uh, me and my friend Capri were in a boat in a long line and it was taking forever so we turned on music and jammed out instead of just sitting there getting all sad so um as hard as it is just do the things that do bring you joy even if you don't see the effects right away and that will lead to making you stronger and making things better than they were before I think that's definitely um, what you live by. You you do live by by that motto or pattern in your life. And I think that was the difference between Nephi and Lehi and Sam versus Laman and Lemuel. And how they were going through the same hard things. But one group was using those hard things to help them come closer to Christ. And the other group was using it to feel angry and resentful. And, and it's a good lesson for me. She, Brooklyn often gives me a pep talk. Um, I'm really frustrated that I feel this way. I'm supposed to be leaving in a minute. They're leaving for a family reunion. I'm hopefully going to go up later tomorrow with my son. Um, but I'm frustrated. I want to be able to do more than I've been able to do the last few hours and days. 
and I don't want to let anyone down and I don't want to be the sick one. And, and that's a whole nother women of worth message. But Brooklyn just said to me, you know, mom, like you're going to need to rest and that's fine. You don't, it, everyone's going to be fine. No one's sh suffering because you're struggling. And I think that oftentimes it's the person that's hurting that I know Melissa shared with me later she she wouldn't have chosen to be the spiritual experience for everybody Ugh. else. But later on, she had teenager after teenager come to her and tell her that feeling. They had the spirit filled the camp in the moment where she was in the most pain. And I think sometimes we are either called to be the one to minister or we're called to be the one to be ministered to. And right now, I'm going to be going right back over to my bed as soon as we're done. <laughs> and um, I'm not ministering to anyone right now other than I get to share this message with you. And, and all 51 people watching. Right now. <laughs> well, I don't want to freak you out, but it's going to be a way more than that. This is just live. So oh. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, in the six, 10,000. So <laughs> fancy. Hi, guys. <laughs> so thank you for joining us here. I hope that um, if you were... <coughs> Um, touched in some way by this message or if you're going through a difficult time or someone that you know is the one that's receiving the help and they're struggling by that they're feeling like they've done something wrong because they're the ones that need all the ministering in your neighborhood or ward that you'll share this video with them and maybe let them know that um, it would it's through this opposition that you're feeling the spirit more just like Brooklyn and Gracie and others felt because Melissa had to be hurt in that situation uh, their testimonies were strengthened because they were able to recognize the spirit come when it was so obvious that there was unity service and prayer and those are the things that help the spirit come and so I hope you'll share that. Thank you, sweet daughter of mine. You're who, welcome. Who I love. I can't talk about my kids without crying. <laughs> and God's not going to give you anything you can't handle. Because true. If, if you pray and say, oh, take this away from me, he's going to say, nope, you can handle it. I'm here to help you, but you got this. And it doesn't mean it's not hard, right? Like. Yeah. He gives us hard things and sometimes we're we're thinking, wait a minute, God does give us sometimes things that feel like we can't handle them, but he's gotten us ready to handle them. And um, whether it's a Josh Forsyth to make everybody <laughs> laugh because he's singing crazy songs or it's a sweet Brooklyn Condi who is always um, good to offer a prayer and offer an, an occur encouraging word last night when I wasn't feeling good and the tears started to come because I had hit my wall and I was not ready to leave. She went and made a cute little treat plate. I couldn't eat it because I'm not feeling good. But there's always, I, I think we make ministering so complicated and it really is doing those simple acts that come to mind. So I hope this helps someone in a ministering idea or help someone that is receiving the ministering today because you may be the the blessing for others and thank you for joining us and we'll see you again here on women of worth wednesday next wednesday